Hi everyone, welcome back to the next diecast. In today's video, I'll be talking about model car scales. I wanted to do another video for my series of model car tip and advice videos that I've filmed over the past five years or so. And I thought a good one to make would be about model car scales because the world of model car scales is quite vast. Um, as you can see here, based off these six models that I have lined up here on my desk. These are all models of the 2002 through 2005 Ford Thunderbird from various manufacturers in various colors and in various scales, as you can see right here. And this was one model that I thought I could um, highlight to show just how many different scales are out there in general and the variety of details and features that come with the specific scales that are highlighted here. These are not the only six scales that you'll see of model cars. There are definitely scales that are in between even the six different scales that you see here. And not all model manufacturers will put a numerical scale on the base of their models. All of these models that you see here, with the exception of this 164 scale Thunderbird, um, have the numerical scale printed on the base of the model. So that kind of makes it um, all that much more hard to narrow down a, a scale of a model car that you are looking to get. These four models that you see up on top of my case here are all made by Welly. And at least for their smaller scale models, Welly does not usually put the actual scale of the model on the base of the model. You'll see that here with this Hummer H3. You do see the name of the model and of course the Welly brand name, but you do not see the scale listed on the base of the model. However, that being said, on a lot of Welly's model boxes, they will list the scale or the scale range. These four models happen to be loose models that I purchased at various Rite Aids. And as far as 164th scale models go, some brands such as Greenlight, who makes that yellow Corvette that you see there, are made to be true 164th scale. Whereas for some other brands such as Hot Wheels or Matchbox, they don't actually give their cars numerical scales. Same goes for Maisto's models that are about Hot Wheels or Matchbox size. Some of the older Matchbox cars do have these scales printed on the basis, however. And these four 118 scale models, which are made by Maisto and Ravel respectively, do have the scales printed on their bases. You can usually find the scale of a model on the box that it comes in as well, which you see here with these two models made by Motormax. Motormax does usually put the scales on both the boxes that their models come in and on the basis of the models themselves. For the majority of models, you will find the scale on either the base or on the box, with some exceptions such as Hot Wheels and Matchbox cars, of course. But in the video, I'll go over the different, I guess, main scales that are out there in terms of model cars and talk about what you can expect to see for each scale and discuss the different details and features you can anticipate seeing with these scales that I'm highlighting here. So from large to small here, we have 118th scale, 124th scale, 143rd scale, 164th scale, 172nd scale, and 187th scale. And again, these are not the only six scales that you'll see in terms of the various model car scales that are out there. And then when it comes to model car brands, some brands will specialize in a single scale or several scales. Um, one example that we see here is Maisto. All three of these are made by Maisto, and Maisto also made a 118 scale version of the Thunderbird as well. And you see that similarly with brands such as Welly, Motormax, and other model manufacturers. Um, they will often make their models in many different scales in a variety of colors. When it comes to a model manufacturer that often makes the same model in the same color in multiple scales, I think Maisto is one of the first that comes to my mind. As you can see here, they made the 2002 Ford Thunderbird model in three different scales, 118th scale, 125th scale, and 164th scale. And then, of course, they also made it in 143rd scale as well. Now, this is actually based off the Thunderbird concept car from 1999, although there weren't really that many differences between the concept vehicle and, and the production car. 
but Maisto actually did make the 2002 model in 143rd scale, and it was basically identical to this concept model that you see here. But you obviously have the black paint, the third brake light, and the black and red two-tone interior instead of the black and yellow two-tone interior that you see here. But this is four scales right here, all by the same model manufacturer of what is essentially the same car. So that's another thing to consider as well. If you're looking at a certain model car to get, see if that model manufacturer made the model you're, you're looking at in different scales. Because let's say you're looking at, you know, the 125th scale Thunderbird and you think, oh, well, that's really well um, detailed. Well, Maisto also happens to make the 118th scale version of the same exact car which has even more detail than the 125th scale version. So that's just something else to make note of there, is that you will frequently find model car manufacturers that will make the same model a lot of times in the same color in numerous scales. So I will briefly go over each of the six different scales that you see here and kind of talk about, I guess we'll say the pros and cons of each of the scales and talk about the different features and characteristics you can anticipate seeing for these scales. We'll go from large to small. On the larger scale end of model car scales, you will see 118 scale and higher. Um, sometimes you'll find models that are 114 scale, 112 scale, 110 scale, and you can actually find, um, there is a brand out there called Posher that makes 1 8th scale kits which are, of course, gigantic. And that scale is not really as common as 1 18th scale as far as larger scale models go. And as a general rule of thumb, the larger the model is, the more details you will likely see and the higher the price will likely be. And I do say that because there are some 1 43rd scale models out there that are higher end and that sell for the same price as a lower end 1 18th scale model. But nine times out of 10, that rule of thumb will apply to model cars when you look at them. Another characteristic you'll see with larger scale models is that you'll frequently see more working features. This Beanstalk Group 118 scale Ford Thunderbird has the opening hood, the opening trunk, the opening doors, and the, and the detachable hard top. Now, of course, you do have 118 scale resin models, which do not have any of the opening features that you see on the die cast models that are in 118 scale. But that being said, these resin models have an exquisite level of detail that you definitely don't see on the smaller scale models. So the higher the scale is, the higher the price and the higher the, the detail will more than likely be. And then you move towards medium scale models, which I consider to be between 143rd and 124th scale. I do consider 124th scale to be on the larger end, and I'll kind of refer to 124th scale both as medium and large scale. 124th scale models often have about the same level of detail as 118th scale models. But when you look at the different brands such as Maisto, Barago, Mo Motormax and Welly that make budget grade models. Their 124 scale models will usually forego certain features of the 118 scale models that are identical, such as having sealed trunks and sometimes also sealed hoods. They usually do not have working steering or suspension and they have less detail on the interiors as well but you still get about the same de level of detail on the exterior of the model because 124 scale is still a fairly large scale as far as a replica goes. And because of that, you can still find a fair bit of detail and features. But if you want to see more detail and features than that, then you would, of course, maybe consider m moving up to a larger scale, such as a 118 scale model. And then on the smaller end of the medium scale model range, you have 143rd scale and 132nd scale, which would of course slot in between 143rd and 124th scale. With 143rd to 132nd scale cars, you can frequently find these as like the pullback models at you know drugstores such as you know Walgreens, CVS, and Rite Aid. And then of course you have the higher end model manufacturers of 143rd scale cars such as Kyosho or Mini Champs, who 
also make larger scale models as well. And a lot of times the 1 43rd scale models that they sell can be found as larger scale models in the same colors. And then on the smaller end of model cars, you have 1 64th scale all the way down to 1 87th scale. Now, 1 64th scale models, of course, the first couple brands that come to people's minds are Hot Wheels and Matchbox because they are scaled to be approximately 1 64th scale. This is made by Maisto. And as you can see here, it's sort of on the cheap side. There is no interior at all. You just have these blacked out on windows and you just have painted on headlights and very basic detailing. That will hold true for most 164th scale models, but you also have higher end 164th scale model brands such as Mini GT and medium grade 164th scale brands such as Johnny Lightning, Green Light, and the Auto World brands. With these, you kind of get a little bit more detail with the paintwork, badging, and most of these will have rubber tires as opposed to Maisto Hot Wheels and Matchbox cars, which have the plastic tires. Of course, Hot Wheels and Matchbox cars, nine times out of 10, will have the interior detailing. And most of these cars you can find, you know, for under two bucks in most cases. Of course, for the higher end brands that I mentioned, they're gonna be a little bit more expensive and harder to find. But I think these types of cars are good for someone who wants a lot of detail, but in a smaller car. Because the main perk of these smaller scale models, although a lot of times they don't have as much detail, is storing them. You won't really need to put a lot of storage space aside for 100 small scale cars compared to what you would have to put aside for 100 larger scale cars. These take up space very, very fast. And you unfortunately won't be able to find, you know, the storage cases that you can find for Hot Wheels and Matchbox sized cars or 164 scale cars. So that I think is the main thing to consider between larger scale and smaller scale models is do you have the space? While details and features are definitely a crucial thing to think about when considering buying model cars, I think space is definitely a large concern as well. Because once you delve into the world of getting 118 scale cars, space will once again run out very quickly, <laughs> where the opposite is true for smaller scale cars. Like I could probably fit a hundred of these on my desk right now. So that I think for me at least is the main thing to consider in terms of larger scale versus smaller scale cars. And then of course, for the smaller end of small scale, we have 172nd and 187th scale. These two scales are definitely not as common. Um, and especially the 172nd scale Thunderbird that you see here. This is made by Hongwell Kararama, I think. Yeah, it's made by Hongwell. And I don't know of any other manufacturer that made a lot of 172nd scale models uh, aside from Hongwell. So, this scale is kind of on the obscure end because it does fit in between 187th and 164th scale. But Hongwell does make a lot of unusual models, or did, I should say. I don't think they're making models anymore. And then, of course, at the smallest end, you have the 187th scale models. These, of course, are primarily made to go on HO scale train layouts, which are, of, of course, 187th scale. Um, this is made by Model Power. And although this is a very tiny model, it does have separately cast headlights and rubber tires as well. So that's really just a basic look at the different scales that model cars are manufactured in. And once again, you don't always see the scale on the bottom of, of a model, but you can usually compare it or just look up the model online, and chances are someone will have published the scale of, of the model somewhere. If you're looking for models with more details and more features, then larger scale might be the, the scale that you want to consider getting in terms of collecting model cars. And if you're someone who's more concerned about space and if you want to get a lot of models at once, then smaller scale models tend to have more cheaper options out there especially when you consider the fact that Hot Wheels and Matchbox dominate the smaller scale market, at least as far as 164th scale models go. 
And then if you're looking for something kind of in between where you want perhaps more details and some features like, like the opening doors and some better detail on the interiors, then the medium scale model range of 143rd to 124th scale models would be a consideration for you in particular. So that really is it. Um, just wanted to give a quick overview of the various model car scales that are out there. And yeah, hope this video was helpful in some way. Um, and feel free to comment down below with your thoughts on, on the video. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.